Hi there, and welcome once again to our Bible studies here at Bible Talk, bringing you In Search of Christianity, as we continue on, continuing on, and we're going we're gonna to occupy until the Lord comes, Hallelujah. which may not be too far off. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, once again, on behalf of Mark and Alice and myself, we want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we're glad that you can be part of this and join us, and remember that uh, you can get on Facebook, facebook.com slash in search of Christianity and participate. Bring your questions or comments or suggestions. We'd just love to hear from you. And as I said, we're continuing on with last last couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, we looked at holiness. Mm -hmm. Last week, we looked at humility. Yes. And today, we're not going to look at happiness. So, But before we don't look at that, Mark is going to ask, God, ask God's blessing on our time together in His Word. Oh Lord, I just ask for peace and that we might feel your peace so we can hear your voice and apply it to our lives and to give it to other people. Amen. Amen. Um, I thought it was nice to know how three H's, holiness, humility, happiness, and if you've been with us on for any amount of time, you know that happiness is not one of my favorite topics. Joy, on the other hand, is. And there is a distinction between the two, between joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. And just typically in the way that we use it, and I believe the way that is true from the Word of God, is that joy, first of all, joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Happiness is something that men pursue. Mm -hmm. And happiness is based on circumstance, circumstance mm -hmm. while joy is just the result of having God within you, right. right? But happiness is not a terrible thing, okay? It just shouldn't be our, our goal or the, focus. or the focus of our lives. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I want to I remind you that the goal is kind of, remember Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, he said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Mm -hmm. He does desire us to have abundant life, but don't be deceived by the enemy. Because Jesus said, even when a man has abundance, his life does not consist of his possessions. So it's not about stuff, mm -hmm. okay? That abundant life comes from walking, living, and moving in the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Yes. That'll bring abundant life to you. And that life, and this is key, that life is eternal, it is about eternity. God has set eternity on our hearts. You know, David said that this present, this present life, this, this is but a vapor. Just, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we have a natural tendency, and make sure that you use focus on that word natural, a natural tendency to just be so focused on the here and now, all right? And unfortunately, <clears throat> at least the last hundred years, that has been a, a focus that has been nurtured and cultivated by the church, mm -hmm. okay? When Jesus prayed, he, in the garden, right? The night that he was taken, after the last supper, he goes into the garden and he prayed and he said, but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world so that they, that's the people who have believed and, and received that free gift of Jesus Christ. Yes that they may have my joy made full in themselves. So joy is something that God produces in us, God desires in us, all right? In John 15, 11, Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. John 15, 11. Do you see the connection here, though? In both of those... Jesus is saying that joy comes from the Word, yes. what He has spoken, right? And that's why um, John the Baptist said that his joy was made full because he heard the voice of the bridegroom, John 3, 29, I believe it is. Joy doesn't come from this troubled world, I, I promise you that. There may be moments 
of, of happiness. But again, they, they're based on the circumstance. And for a, an awful lot of people in this world, there's no circumstance that engenders happiness, not lasting happiness, right? So joy doesn't come from what's going on. It's flitting and fleeting happiness, maybe, but it's not joy, okay? And his desire, God's desire in us is joy. So we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about happiness. I said we're not going to. <laughs> We're going to talk about another H. This is like the 4-H club, right? Okay. Okay. It's What's important is the holiness, the humility, and hope. Hope. Amen. Yes. Hope is what's important. Absolutely. Okay? Which the world has and does not have. Jesus said, we got to get this, we got to get this straight, particularly in these days. Mm. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions, dwelling places, right? Mm -hmm. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. John 14, 1 and 2. So he's saying, don't be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. But he connects that, not to what's happening this moment, but what awaits us. That he's going to prepare a place for us. Amen. Okay. So if you are so naturally focused on the here and now, you may miss those things that will give peace to your heart for eternity. Hope is so important. Mm. Hope is, but, oh, not, my word, yes. but again, in the world that we live in, I think not everybody understands hope that God speaks of, mm -hmm. right? You know, somebody who goes into a, a, a convenience store and buys a, a lottery ticket today, they hope they're going to win. Well, let's hope. Well, there's not an awful lot of reason for that hope. Mm -mm. I know Mark has asked me in the past, <laughs> right? I, I don't buy lottery tickets. And I said that doesn't really diminish my odds very much. <laughs> because the odds of me buying a lottery ticket and winning are 13 million something to, to, to one. The odds of me finding a lottery ticket that's a winning ticket are 13 million one to one. So, I mean, there's not an awful lot of difference. I'm as likely to find a winning lottery ticket as buy one. If God wants me to win, it'll blow through the wind and, and land in my lap. I'm not going to buy one. The problem is what most people think of as hope is an illusion. It's what they wish for. Yes. All right? Now... When you get into wishing, you're talking about desires. And we've, we've talked a lot about the desires of the heart, right? God desires. And he said, you know, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. But when you truly delight yourself in the Lord, he becomes the desire of your heart. Yes, he does. Okay? Uh, Walt Disney, isn't it? I may get myself in trouble here, based on my memory. When I was a little kid, mm -hmm. you ever hear Jiminy Cricket? Oh, yeah. Did he not sing a song? A dream is a wish that your heart makes or something? Yeah, something to that. Something to that, I right. think. Yeah, yeah. So it's more of a wish. Mm -hmm. the, the hope that the world has is they wish it was this way. They wish it was that way. But hope has to have a foundation. Yes. There has to be reason and for assurance. hope. Assurance. Well, that, if there's no reason for the hope, then it becomes just an illusion. Mm -hmm. And when that illusion doesn't come to be, people become disillusioned. Right. Hope is a guarantee. Uh, well, is, is based on a guaranteed thing. Yes, and we're going to talk about that because it is. It's uh, you know I, I don't want to get too, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'll I'll just say that and we'll say it again. Then. Mm -hmm. Hebrews eleven one. Yes. Now faith is the sure. the assurance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the the conviction or evidence of things not seen. Right. Okay, that's what faith is. It's it's the assurance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. But it has a basis of what we've heard. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So if God has spoken something, whether it's to all of us or to you specifically, and it is the Lord, mm -hmm. you have good reason for hope. Right. And you will not be disappointed yeah. because his word always comes to pass. All right. And that's that goes back to saying, don't let your heart be troubled. My goodness gracious, look at the world that we're living in right now. You, have, you turn on the news. I can just randomly turn on the news, and I'm going to see disaster. I'm going to see pain. I'm going to see suffering. I'm going to see war. I'm going to see famine. I'm going to 
these are the, the these are the things that are going on in this world today. They don't engender a lot of hope. And yet, God says, don't let your heart be troubled. And by the way, Paul wrote to Timothy, and he said, you know, that you can wrongly divide the word of God. Because he said, study to show yourself approved unto God a workman, not needing to be ashamed, who rightly dividing the word of God. A half a truth can be a whole lie. So when you hear people just say, let not your heart be troubled, there's a lot missing. There's some, no, the key, the foundation is missing. Mm -hmm. Believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus said. That's right. If somebody tells you to not let your heart be troubled, but don't tell you to believe in Jesus Christ, they're lying to you. They're flat lying to you because they're giving you no foundation for that hope that your heart shouldn't right. be troubled. Right. Okay? Watch out for half-truths. So hope I said that joy comes from hearing the voice of God. That's where hope comes from. Hope comes from, you know, it's, it says, Paul wrote to the Romans, and he said, whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. Whatever was written, he's talking about the Word. Yes. From Genesis 1, all the way through, and for us, to, all the way to Revelation 22, whatever was written was written for our instruction, so that pers through perseverance and the encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. That's where hope comes from. From God's Word. But not just from God's Word. It comes from applying God's Word. Because we're not just to be hearers of the Word, but we're to be doers of the Word. Otherwise, we become ineffectual. And God's Word in us becomes ineffectual if we are not living it. And the more we do His Word, the more His promises become real in our life. And that's when it becomes that faith that has an assurance of the things hoped for. Yes, yes. Okay? Let me, and, you know, I've heard this expression. You, you may have heard this in the past. I've heard people say, well, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The middle part just doesn't belong there. God says his word is settled in heaven. If God said it, it is settled. Whether you believe it or not, it's settled. No, no change the, the, the place that it has to be settled is in you for it to have impact and effect on your life. Mm -hmm. That it becomes that assurance of the hope that God has given you. I, you know, we just had a, a, another tragedy here in the United States mm -hmm. just, just recently yes. where a college, a small college in Oregon, a, a fellow walked in and there was another 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 school shooting in the United States, mm -hmm. which has become incredibly, incredibly commonplace. Yes. And there were 10 people killed. Mm -hmm. A gunman walked into this school, shot and killed 10 people, shot and wounded, I think it's like seven, uh, seven more. And interestingly, it, it, the report is, and this is a, a verified report, is that he, he had all these people under the gun and said, had them stand up one at a time and said, are you a Christian? And if they said yes, pow, he shot them and killed them. Get ready to meet God. Your and he God. said, well, no, you, he said something to the effect, you're lucky because you're about to meet your God. Yeah. Well, the fact of the matter is, they were about to meet their God yes. because God is faithful. Mm -hmm. And he, Jesus said, don't fear those who can kill the body because it is about eternity. And this life, if you should live to be 150 years old, it's but a vapor yes. compared to the eternal life that God the Father sent Jesus Christ into the world to get for, obtain for you. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of tragedies, I mean, it's just, like I said, it's becoming more and more commonplace. The problem is hope diminishes. The more you get separated from God's Word, the more your hope will diminish. Yes. The more your faith will diminish. The more your joy will diminish because it's not being fueled and fed on that word. Like I said, John, his faith was made full, complete, because he heard the voice of the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. If you're not hearing the voice of God, do not be surprised that all of a sudden you're getting away from having hope. Yes. And you know what you'll have then? Despair. Mm -hmm. Suicide oh, throughout goodness. the world has become epidemic. Yes. Epidemic. Why? Because people have no hope. 
That's why, because they have no hope. They are in despair. If you don't have hope, what do you have left? I mean, we have, like right now, I mean, literally, <laughs> millions and millions of people are just scattering all over the globe here in the West, out of, out of Latin America and into the, trying to get into the United States, in Europe, from, from the Mideast, from Africa. Why? Because where they are, they feel they have no hope. You have to have hope. I don't, we already mentioned the verse, you know, it says in Proverbs that hope deferred makes the heart sick. People are heart sick. People are truly, truly heart sick. It says, but hope fulfilled is a tree of life. Amen. God desires that you have life and have it abundantly. It will only come from his word. Satan, who comes to kill, to steal, to destroy, his only tool is to separate you from the Word of God. That's what he, that's what he desires so greatly to do. You know, I, I was thinking today, I hear all this. I just had my 72nd birthday. Da, da, da. I'm old-fashioned. Mm -hmm. I'm not 72 years old, old-fashioned. I am thousands of years old-fashioned. Because the Word of God has not gone out of style. For whatever was written in earlier times, whether it was a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, it's the, the scripture, three thousand years ago, it is life-giving. It is God-breathed. Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and said, all scripture is God-breathed. It brings life. It brings that abundant life. And yet, throughout the church, it, it becomes apparent that Christians are getting further and further away from that connection to the yes. Word of God. This is why it's so important, and what I really want to try and encourage you and us to do is what Jesus said. If you abide in my Word, if you continue in my Word, you're truly my disciples. Because if you're not in God's Word, uh, you know what? You can, you can go to church every Sunday and whatever, your prayer meeting on Wednesday night. You can tithe 50% of your income. You can do this and do that. But the fact of the matter is, if you're not abiding in God's word, you're not truly his disciple. I didn't say that. Jesus said it. Deal with it. Because he's not doing it for any other reason than to bring you joy-filled, abundant life. That's, that's his purpose. That you would have hope. In these terribly, terribly perilous last days, you would be filled with hope. That when everybody else is, you know, just shattered by the, the events of the world, you can stand fast knowing that your future is assured. Yes. I'm telling you the truth. What's your hope? Well, I'm going to go back to the Apostle Paul. Because when he opened his letter to Timothy, the first letter to Timothy, he said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus, of Christ Jesus, according to the commandment of God, our Savior, and of Christ Jesus, who is our hope. He is our hope. It is about a relationship with him that gives you a relationship with God the Father. These are stormy days. We are living in stormy, difficult times. That's why. It says in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, this hope, the hope that I'm talking about, the hope that comes from the Word of God, the hope that comes from God, the hope that is Jesus Christ, we have as an anchor of the soul a hope both sure and steadfast. So when all of these things go up and down, Mostly down now. It's kind of in a downward spiral because the culture is changing and people tell me I'm old-fashioned. You know what? I, I will rejoice in being old-fashioned. Hallelujah. Amen. Because nobody has found a way to improve on God's Word. Amen. Nobody has found a way to improve on God's ways. But the devil, who is a liar by nature and the father of lies, will continually tell you that new and improved is the way to go. Yeah. It's, it's a true. A lie. It's, it's a lie. It's a lie. You know, anchors are there to hold you in a storm. Right. 
When things are going wrong, the anchors are there to hold you fast in the storm. But it's got to be it's got to be the anchor that is the anchor of the soul. That's right. Christ Jesus. Amen. That's the only one. You know, in Acts 27, there's the account of Paul as he's being transported by sea, being taken to Rome to go to stand before Caesar on trial. Mm -hmm. And a massive, massive storm arises. If you haven't read Acts 27 and read about that storm, it's good reading, I'll tell you what. Uh, the storm arises and it just is ripping the ship apart that's carrying Paul and others. It is tearing it apart. The men on board have all given up hope. They've all given up hope. Yet Paul stands on the deck of the ship and encourages him, saying that an angel of God stood there and spoke to me and said, none of you should be lost. It's the word of God that brings hope. But I want to read you this. It says, I'm reading from Acts 27, starting in verse 29. Fearing that we might run aground somewhere on the rocks, they cast four anchors from the stern and wished for daybreak. See? Four anchors. Because if you're going to do it in the world, you need more. You need a lot, okay? And it still won't work, as this proves. But they wished for daybreak. Mm. Okay. They didn't have any hope. They didn't have that assurance. They didn't have that hope as an assurance. But as the sailors, remember, there are sailors on board. There are the Roman soldiers who are taking these prisoners. And there are all the prisoners. And there's the cargo. The sailors were trying to escape. They wanted to get off the ship. They were trying to escape from the ship and had let down the ship's boat into the sea. That's the lifeboat. The ship's boat. That's the little boat, the lifeboat. On the pretense of intending to lay out anchors from the bow. Uh -huh. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, unless these men remain in the ship, you yourselves cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes they cut away the ship's lifeboat, <laughs> right? Yes. And let it fall away. No more lifeboats. If you are placing your trust in lifeboats, mm -hmm. in the things that you can do just in case God doesn't come through, that's right. you're in trouble. Because if you're placing your trust in a lifeboat, God will sit back and say, well, let's see if it can save you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what he said? Even... I, I meet Christians that are involved in astrology. You ever read in Isaiah? I think it's Isaiah 47, 13. And he says, you know, you go to the astrologist. Well, when the, when the troubles arise, let them save you. You make choices. And the choices you make, God will allow you to, to have yes. virtually all the time. He's not going to force anything on us. But what a man believes will determine his choices. And what you choose will determine your life. Yes. Okay. Think about this now. I'm going to read from 1 John chapter 3. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we will see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. Holiness. Where does the holiness come from? It won't happen unless you have that hope. Because your mind, your spirit will be every place else. You'll be distracted by the voice of the enemy. Okay? Mm -hmm. Listen, we're not finished yet. We're not perfected yet. We're in the process. He's bringing us from glory to glory. He is conforming. This is the great promise. Yes. Romans 8, 29. That whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed into the image of his son Christ Jesus. The potter is it's still, still molding, forming. It's still right? working on us, yep. We're not finished. When you realize that, that's a good cause to be humble. Okay? Holiness and humility are locked together. Yes. This hope will be a purifying hope, making us holy just as he is holy. Okay? Because the one who has this hope, fixed on Jesus, purifies himself just as he is pure. Okay? Mm. Our holiness... Our humility, our hope, our faith is all based on one thing alone. Our relationship with God the Father. Yes. And that relationship is based on one thing alone, Jesus Christ. 
It's about relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not about religion. It's not about relics. It's not about rituals. Yeah. It is about a relationship with God the Father that is only available through the atoning work of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Abiding in God's word is going to raise faith in your life. That faith will be the, the conviction. It will be the assurance of the things that you hope for based on what God has spoken to you. Praise God. It will give you that power to have joy, that that joy will be manifest, that a joy that is unshakable. Yes. That nothing that's going on in this present world, not with the economy, not with ISIS, not with this and that, not with your job, not with your mortgage, that there is a joy that is unshakable as long as your hope is Amen. set on Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're not abiding in God's word, and that may be old-fashioned, because we're not doing that much anymore. If you're not abiding, dwelling, spending your time in God's word, having, and more than that, it says devote yourself to prayer. Prayer, you know, it's like this. We, do, we come together and we do these studies prayerfully that it's an encouragement mm -hmm. to all of everybody that hears it, an encouragement. I hope that this is a blessing to you. Yes. I have a foundation for that hope. And the foundation for that hope is that God's word always accomplishes God's purpose. Amen. And you're getting some God's word here. Yes. All right. That's why I can have that hope. It will accomplish his purpose. Yes. But his purpose is going to be determined. You have a choice to make. Like Joshua said to the people in the wilderness, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve Sir, the Lord. Lord. Let me say this one more time. What you believe will determine your choices. What you choose will determine your life. And that life needs to be based, a life of faith, based on, that will give you that conviction of the things that you're hoping for. Jesus said that when he returns, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith. And that faith has to have a manifestation, that you are working the things that you're hoping for. Okay? You're working based on the things that you have heard from God. Not on your own. Not on your own. Okay? If you trust in the world and the things of the world, they will fail. And God may sit back and say, well, that's what you chose. That's, right. that's what the Word of God teaches. You know, the vast majority of people, the vast majority of Christians, and the last survey I saw, which was a few years ago, I think it was like 85% of Christians believe that the Scripture says that God helps those who help themselves. Mm. Which is, by the way, a lie from the pits of hell. Yes, it is. God helps those who cry out to him for help. Yes. But uh that's, yeah, that's what. There is so much that we have lost sight of because we are living in the perilous last mm -hmm. days. When if the time were not shortened, even the elect could be deceived. Right. Okay? We're going to talk about this more next week. I do want to talk about the fact, you know, this, this scheme that the devil has to deprive you of that abundant, joy-filled, faith-led life that God desires for you. Mm -hmm. So be back with us for that, okay? If you're blessed, ask other people to join us. Father, we just thank you, Lord thank you, God. Jesus. Did you love us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world to do for us what we could not do for ourselves, to take away the stain of sin that separated us from you, Father? to reunite us with you, to repair us with you, Thank Father. You. Thank you, to give us a faith that would give us a hope, Lord God, that we would have all of that fruit of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. So, Father, I just praise you and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So until next week, and I pray you'll be back with us. God bless you. An old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. But I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners.